Hi, in this video, we will set up a basic authentication for uh, Audit and Native Service in SAP App Giver. In previous video, we built the PO List app using hard coded value as authentication. And in this video, we will set up a login page and then we will take credentials from a login screen. This is the app. And if you haven't seen my earlier video, I would highly recommend you to go back and watch my previous video. So, you know, you will have a base to understand how to set up the authentication. And I will leave the link here on the top. Oh, here on the card there. The first part to activate the authentication, go to the auth tab and enable authentication and select uh, direct third party authentication because this the other one is for Google Firebase, which we are not using it in this solution. So activate third party. Uh, this will add authentication views. So we are good with that. And then it will create a, a initial view as a login page. So now if we go back to our page, we will have um, a login page added by this authentication module. Now on this login page, uh, it brings the, um, uh, the page variables, which are credentials, uh, username and a password. And this username and a password, we have to pass it to the Odata native service call. Uh, if, we, if you remember from my previous video, or I will show you it here, uh, if we switch back to our PO list, uh, save your list and if we go to the uh, data variables and purchase order this is where we were setting the authentication uh, we use the uh, hard-coded values so i just basically pull the basic and then i entered username and a password uh, i removed that and now uh, with the login screen we we will pass username and a password from the login screen so we'll go back to our login page here on the view so on login uh, press or a tap uh, it should set up a variable which can be used throughout the application so for that purpose we have to create a app specific variable because the credentials are stored in a page specific variable so here uh, the credentials are a page variable and not an app variable so having a page variable uh, restrict or limits our access to the uh, other pages so to make it global, we'll create an app variable and we'll pass these credentials and we'll store it in a global scope. And then we will pass uh, these uh, credentials whenever we make a call. So I will create uh, a new variable, app variable, uh, exactly like what we have here. So credentials. And the type is object. Then we have a uh, first property as username. And then we can add another property as password. So this should match with what we have here. And technically, it doesn't matter. You can create whatever variable name you want to create, and then you can map it. Uh, you know, in, when you set a variable value, you can select a specific variable. So we have now app variable here. We'll go back to our login page. On login action, we will see the flow here in a flow function. Uh, we have an alert. Then it sets a app variable, and I assume this is the page variable. Uh, hmm. I haven't seen this one. Uh, so let's uh, remove the alert. We don't need it. Let's uh, set first the app variable, uh, page variable. And then we set the uh, page variable value to the app variable, or we could directly actually map it here. So rather doing that, so let's uh, remove this one. The username and a password. So if you see the binding for the username is credentials username, but this is a page variable. We can change this binding and bind it to the app variable. So it is accessible across. Username, save, password, value, data variable, app variable, credentials, and password, and save. Save. So now we have a username and a password stored in the uh, app variable. Mm -hmm. Now on top of this, we can authenticate ourselves. And the way we can authenticate is by calling uh, get record collection, uh, or you can call the HTTP um, uh, request to fetch the token. And then you can use that uh, CSRF uh, token uh, to, to pass the data to the backend. But for simplicity, I'm just going to call the get record collection. Uh, I will connect the tab action. 
So this is going to call the purchase orders, which uh, which is the uh, data source we have. And in here, in authentication, uh, we'll add the we'll map the um, object with properties, and username is coming from data variables, app variable, credentials, and username. And the password is coming from app variable, credentials, and password. And save, save. So the get collection, uh, get record collection, uh, has two outputs. So if you see it here, the first uh, port one uh, is called when we have a successful call, and the port two is raised or called when there is an error or a failure. So that means if uh, port one is triggered, that means uh, we are we have successfully authenticated ourselves. Now you can limit number of uh, records because this is uh, kind of open query. You can add uh, paging or you can add a filter condition to just get get one record to test or you use the, the basic HTTP if you know if you want to know how to use HTTP flow function um, you know check my app driver uh, playlist I have another video to consume a rest service and in that service I use the HTTP function and on error we will raise uh, a message or toast connect that and uh, those messages please retry login basic okay and on successful it will dismiss the initial view and it should navigate to the uh, payroll list so we can test uh, with the, the current setup we should be able to bypass the first screen or we should be able to successfully authenticate ourselves and move on to the next page which is a payroll list now we did not set up the authentication for PO list, so it will uh, show a pop-up or it will prompt us to enter user ID and a password. So let's launch. Open. Username. And a password. So yeah, we don't need the developer tool. So you can see we uh, pass the login screen that means we were uh, successfully authenticated ourselves on a back end and we uh, reached to the PO list page so the first part works fine now we'll go back and we'll switch to PO list in here uh, the first call whenever the PO list is launched um, this is the well it, this this is the first call you know gets called whenever we launch the PO list so here we have to set up the authentication again. So we'll go back, select basic, username, same thing coming from app variable, username, save, and password is again coming from app variable, uh, password, and save. Save. But on PO list, we have two places where we use the um, uh, get record collection. One is the list, the initial uh, uh, launch view, as soon as we launch, the first call is made to this uh, uh, data variable here but whenever we enter something in a search uh, search bar on the top we call the get record collection um, uh, flow function so we have to set up the authentication here as well we'll go, we'll go down here authentication by basic username again is coming from app variable password app variable password and save, save, save. Now, if we run, let's launch again one more time. So, again, I will authenticate myself. Okay, so now we have a list of POs. And if I try to search, let's say 27, this PO and search. So this search uh, functionality also works. So this is how we can set up the basic authentication. There could be more than one way of setting basic authentication, but what I find in a native Odata integration, I do not have a lot of flexibility to set the you know HTTP header or to play around with HTTP header and CSRF token. Uh, if you use OData service as a REST service instead native OData service, then you have that flexibility to add HTTP uh, headers, uh, which is like a basic authentication token or CSRF uh, token. 
if you want to know about the rest based approach you can check my playlist and if you want to integrate the odata native then you can use this video as a reference so thank you for watching and see you in the next video